Good afternoon and welcome to Agri-Food Conversations brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is Tom Bunn, a principal on the iSelect Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you all to our discussion today. Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in food and ag. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, and this month's theme is food ingredients. On today's call, we are joined by Jen Yu Wang, co-founder and CEO of Lipid. Lipid is a deep tech startup shaping the future of food. Its phyto fat accurately mimics the texture, mouthfeel, transfer of flavor, and cooking behavior of animal fats using the company's novel formulation and the microencapsulation method. Each of you knows companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We have invited you to this webinar because you are some of the smartest, most talented people in Lipid's market, who are potential customers for their products and services. You've built a similar company, or you have unique expertise and understand the challenges and opportunities in Lipid's market and that they may face. Before we get started with a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today, please take a moment to answer. And a few process comments. We are not soliciting investment in any way whatsoever. This presentation is provide information to help Lipid find customers, mentors, or other strategic relationships that can help them grow their business. Secondly, you can use the Q&A box to ask a question at any time, and we will answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation. Finally, the webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay. So with that, I am pleased to introduce Jin Yu Wang, co-founder and CEO of Lipid. Thank you very much for joining us today, Jin Yu. Uh, yeah, thanks, Tom, for the quick introduction. And hi, everyone. I'm Jin Yu. I'm the co-founder of Lipid. And in Lipid, we are creating fat alternative to bring alternative food products to the next level. And why is, why is it? fat so important it's because like fat is actually 40 percent or even more in a lot of different meat products like burger patties like bacon like marbling steak there are actually a lot of uh, contribution from fat when we eat those meat foods and that's also the reason why uh, vegan meat still doesn't taste like a real meat today from our perspective because we think that currently all the plant-based fat solution or the fat solution on the market is not good enough as an animal fat and people usually only have a very limited solution it's pretty surprisingly that people use coconut oils or palm oils or even some hydrogenated oil uh, to try to mimic animal fats functionalities and try to improve the texture and mouthfeel however you can see you can see that for those options on the market right now, uh, their milling behavior is usually still very low. Like for coconut oil, when you cook the products, all the fat will just milled out. And that definitely affect the texture and also the releasing of flavors and the appearance of several different type of products. And that's the challenge we see uh, on the market at this point for alternative food products. And in lipids, we bring phyto fat as a solution to the market. And what we are trying to do is to create a high, a high melting behavior fat that made with plant-based ingredients. So you can see from this image that it's a dumpling. It actually tastes pretty delicious after cooking. Uh, we try it for a lot of time, different times. And what we, we do over here is we mix our fat with uh, like pork, uh, plant-based pork matric. And after all the cooking process, the fat will still stay stable in the products. And that chain, the first thing is it bring the juiciness into the, the meat. And the second thing is it also improve the texture, the mouthfeel, because the fat uh, provide that, doesn't melt it out after cooking. And the third part we think it's very important is that it actually also bring a better nutritional profile. So a lot of fat we are using today, is still saturated fat in the products, like for coconut oils or palm oil, saturated fat composition is still pretty high. And 
by using our solution over here, we actually bring down uh, the saturated fat composition by 97%. And you, you can see that uh, a lot of people on the market, they are trying to actually cut the saturated fat uh, because for consumers, uh, based on our study, consumers choose plant-based food uh, because one of the re main reasons is because of it's healthier. However, if you look back in the, in the nutritional label on the product today, it's maybe not that healthy compared with a real meat. So that's one side that we try to do a lot of uh, experiment and research on is how we can use unsaturated fat, like olive oils or like sunflower oil and to create a, a healthy fat solution, like fat alternative but at the same time provide the same functionalities. And as you can see over here, so we what we try to improve is on the saturated fat composition, we reduce 97%. So we can actually cut it to almost zero compared with all the, all the, on the, all the product on the market at this point. Yeah, so our model is like, uh, we are actually trying to sell our fat and into different applications and ways. And what we are trying to support the industry and the field is by using our fat solution, we want to enable a lot of different new products on the market or, or better products on the market. So a very uh, like low hanging food, like people are already using it at this point is on a lot of ground patties or ground products. So you can see that there is a very juicy meatball over there. That's one of our prototype too. And actually this one is one we work with our uh, partners together. Uh, so you basically use our fat as a coconut oil flex. So you can add it into the meat metric. And after, after like the mixing process, our fat will stay in a small pieces in it and after cooking, you will just improve all the different uh, perspective of, your, of the products, like over here, like juiciness. And also we improve the texture and mouthfeel. And at the same time, we, can, we actually study some uh, flavor releasing. We find out that by using our way to deliver flavors, we can extend its delivery. And it's very critical because the first thing is uh, you want to not only make your let the consumer taste the products not only in the first bite but also in the second bite and third bite so that's very critical that you make sure the flavor uh, was really stay in the products but not just people can smell it but not really taste it so that's that's very critical from our our end too so that's one the first prototype that we work a lot today is on the ground and patties uh, and the second part is on the more, I would say more advanced one is that we can use our fat to enable different uh, high fat food products. For example, like bacons, like uh, marbling steak, uh, like charcuterie products. So that's another big uh, category that we are working and working on right now. And I'm pretty it's it's kind of like a very big milestone for the whole lipid thing that we actually launched our product uh, recently with, with some of like our partners in Asia. So we launched uh, our Fido Fat Burger Patties in the Chan vegan restaurants and they use a, a lot of fat in their burger patties to try to improve the mouthfeel, but at the same time, make it healthy. It's a, a little bit, it sounds a little bit weird, but actually by using our fat, as I mentioned, we can reduce a lot of saturated fat and we also reduce the overall calories. So by using, by adding more of our phyto fat, it actually make the product better. Yeah. So that's pretty cool that we have some product on the market already in some restaurants. And we, we not only work with restaurant partners, we are also working with different uh, food uh, like products, consumer brands, to try to bring our fat solution to improve their products too. But I will say right now, we are looking for a lot of different uh, restaurant partners to try to see how our fat can make 
current products better. And also uh, for this one, it's very it's a very successful launch that in, in a week they sell, sell out like maybe almost 200 or 300 burger patties in just one stores. So that's, that's a very good uh, showcase and studies that we, we keep learning from this different launch. And we find out that our fat can actually work pretty well in the restaurant system. Yeah, so a little bit about us. Uh, I haven't really introduced ourselves. So Lipid is a, we, we are located in uh, South San Francisco. Uh, so we are US-based food tech startup. And my background is in chemical engineering. And I did a lot of research in material processing back in my PhD in Cornell. And that's where I met my the other co-founder, Michelle. Uh, Michelle is a food scientist and she's a, an expert in fat alternative that she actually spent all her PhD research in this topic. So she definitely know the field a lot. And our vision is pretty clear that we want to make food taste great and delicious, no matter it's animal meat or plant-based meat. That's what we really want to do in our, like this, this startup and this uh, mission. And by using fat solution and, and by focusing on the, the end goal of fat, that's why we bring different values in, on, into the product and into the market. Yeah, so a quick summary is that uh, we can tune, we can use plant-based plant ingredient, but we can tune its muting behavior to make it behave like animal fat. And also the other part is that we can tune its texture so it can be solid or semi-solid that we use it in different type of applications. And the third one is that we make the nutritional profile a lot better uh, by using unsaturated fat as a main ingredient. And the fourth part is that we extend the flavor delivery. We make sure the flavor really keep inside the, the fat and the oils and try to mimic the animal meats uh, or e even other sectors like confectionery or baking industry, different flavors, delivery system. Yeah, so that's the full, uh, full, full part that we engineer a lot uh, in, in the team uh, and try to bring the, the fat solution to the market. And right now we have our headquarters over, over here in the States, but at the same time, we are also working with a lot of partners in Asia too. So we, we set up an office in Asia this year and we are trying to uh, bring up our production line uh, in, in this year and, and early next year. That's, that's our current focus at this point. And we're working a lot every day. Yeah. And this is just some of the press release and awards that we have recently. So we actually won the uh, CPA, CPF uh, Food Innovation Challenge in Singapore last year and also buyers crop science and hello tomorrow challenge third place in hello tomorrow challenge in france uh, also late last year so that's a bit of a little bit introduction of ourselves and and i'm happy to discuss and share more about what we are doing thanks jen you appreciate that um to ask a question the best way to go about that is to uh either type a question into the bottom of your Zoom app or to raise your hand on the right side of your Zoom app and I can unmute you and you can ask Jin Yu a question uh, directly. But uh, Jin Yu, to get things started, um, would love to know a little bit where you are about kind of uh, where you are on, on the cost curve um, and, and how it compares to, uh, you know, not only animal, animal uh, fat inputs, um, both high and low end, but also some of your competitors, be they, um, you know, other, you know, synthetic biology type companies or other vegan uh, fat inputs would, would love to just get a sense of where you stand on the cost curve. Yeah, no, that's, that's a very good question. Uh, and for us, uh, we actually are, that's one of the focus when we say we are trying to scale it up, the, the focus is actually trying to also bring down the cost to the level that people can use it. Uh, and as you see in the in the like the showcase that we already work with some of the of the partners in restaurant system, that we actually already bring down the cost that 
not like a things that could fat or like I would say that we are just a lot more closer to plant-based fat today, like high-end coconut oils uh, or like other uh, like uh, very functional ingredients in in the field. Yeah, so our goal is to in the end bring our coast down to very com uh, compatible with coconut oil in the same range. So that's that's our final goal, and we are in, in progress to work on over there. But I would say the price or the cost for at this point is already kind of affordable that a lot of people are already trying it and even bring it and use it in the, in the market at this point. Got it. Can you touch on at a high level, your kind of intellectual property strategy? Um, and I guess to have a little bit deeper into, in, into the unique value add from a technological point of view that you guys are, are doing. Yeah. So from the, from the, comparison of ips or something like that uh, i will say the main difference is that our melting point is very high like we can do 400 fahrenheit or even above and there isn't th those type of solution on the market at this point and with this very high melting points uh fat we are not doing chemically modifying we are not doing hydrogenations or using uh like I would say people usually do hydrogenation to bring up the, the melting points, but we are not doing that. So it means that we don't have any trans fat in it. And more surprisingly is that uh, we, we also don't use a lot of saturated fat in our solution. So the main difference is on the melting point and at the same time that we, we don't trade off with the nutritional profile. So that's very key different comparing with all the other uh, solutions. Yeah. Thank you. Looks like we have a question from the audience. Brian Chow asks, what is your particular strength science uh, formulation or sales channel as number one? Yeah, see that. Yeah, so uh, particular strength, it's the same as I, I, I just mentioned, is like we have a very high melting point plant-based fat uh, by using healthy ingredients only. And the science behind it is that we think very differently than other uh, approach. Like I can quickly sum up uh, if you are trying to make fat alternative right now, the, most of the people uh, traditionally use chemically modifying like hydrogenation. And we find out that it's not healthy because a lot of trans fat come out. So people move out from there and try to use some oleo gel technology. And recently people do like, uh, uh, I would say cell culture approach or fermentation, uh, those different type of uh, approach, but still at the same time, the melting behavior system is still very low comparing with animal fat. And the reason behind it is because when we see the fat over there with very, with a bacon fat, it's not just fat, it's actually an adipose tissue. So we are trying to mimic the whole adipose tissue system by using our microencapsulation technology so we can recreate a similar structure, like microstructure, and at the same time, bring up, not only bring up the melting point, but also create a similar texture and profile. Yeah, so that's the science behind it. And on the sales channels, uh, we just started as a startup. Uh, we are, I think we are still in early stage. So we are still ex exploring different approach to bring our fat and technology into the market. Uh, and at, at this point, I, I would say we try a lot on working with uh, different partners in the food industry and also working with different restaurant system to see how we can supply our fat in those channels. Yeah. But I, we are happy to take advice or any uh, suggestions that for open opportunities on this. Good. And the second question Brian had was, um, more companies enter into synthetic lipids. What are the key success factors and how do you see competitive landscape five years from now? Yeah, so definitely the first thing is cost. For, for synthetic lipids, uh, fermentation or cell culture approach, the cost is very tough. Even five years later, how do you bring down to make it compatible with plant oils? I see, I still think it's very challenging as a chemical engineers. And the, so 
let's assume five years later, uh, all those uh, since equilibrium were all works pretty well. Um, in my personal perspective, I think what they will do is to try to replace some of the very high end functional ingredients like flavor. So that's that's what I think since lipid work will probably work well in later on in the in the product. It's to bring in the value of flavors. So they will be treated as a flavor ingredient, but not really like the main oil ingredient in the products. They that's that's my guess. And the second part of it is that for those things lipids, when you try to produce it, you still get lipid molecules, which means that it's still like an oil. Uh, it's not like an adipose tissue. So people still have to work on structuring technology to try to make it solid uh, or try to make it perform really like a animal fat system. So that's actually what we are working on structuring system. So uh, I think we can work with those things like lipids pretty well. We can actually uh, help them or even include their uh, lipids in our system and then to make it performs like in terms of texture performs like animal edipo tissue yeah so i would say we are more like a collaboration situation but not really a competition and the second thing is like it also bring down their the average cost if we can combine those different technologies together yeah fantastic jen you have you done any I guess what's what's the consumer response and 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 tasting panels, um, et cetera. Can you talk a little bit about kind of the uh, the, the the consumer mouthfeel that you've you know information that you've gotten from um, either panels or blind taste tests? Yeah, no, that's that's actually what I like to really work with restaurants because you see the feedback very immediately, and uh, I will say the consumer response is really great that they they all feel like the, it's more juicier and also bring I, I'll say some of the feedback is on they bring in the the sponginess into the products and there are no whole no a lot of holes like a, a holes in the in the burger patties it sounds weird but actually what we up, observe is that when you cook the product with coconut oils or other oil system usually there are a lot of uh, empty hole in it because that all the oil milled out and the texture that's why the sponginess kind of like just uh, doesn't be there after a cooking process it changed a lot and that's that's exact the same feedback we see from our con consumers feedback that a lot of them mentioned that they can feel the oils in it and at the same time the the burger patties it's more spongy compared with the the other like control version yeah so that's that's one really good great feedback and I will say the other feedback, pretty interesting feedback is that when we launch in co-launch some products in the very beginning, we find out that uh, we, we turn our melting point to be very high. And a lot of consumer give the feedback that they didn't see the sizzling over there. So that's why we iterate our product design and we make our phytofats fats uh, melting behavior to be close to like 330 Fahrenheit or in that range. So actually it will mute it out a little bit when you cook the product, but not totally stay over there like a solid. Uh, that's that's pretty interesting that people can really see those details as a consumer. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Brian has a follow-up question. Brian asks, no major challenge in design to scale in your pathway? Uh, definitely not. <laughs> no, definitely. They're definitely challenging in our pathway. That's that's of course. And that's why we had we still there are still a long way to go for us to bring it to a real industry scale. And uh, I will say the bit uh, or in our challenge of scale, uh, that it's the same as like probably like a fermentation or cell culturing approach. Their challenge is in, in how to improve make a larger batch of bioreactor. And that's very similar in our case is that how do we scale up our itch like production in each batch, like an itch reactor system? It's the same. So I would say that for us, it's very similar that all we are trying to do is to drive down the cost in processing fee. Yeah. 
but the advantage or like some of the good part or easy part for us is that our main input is it's just oils and water so that's our cox is not that crazy compared with cell culture or fermentation approach but our processing is the same that's why we still need to prove a lot on scaling it up and bring down it to in and bring it to industry scale yeah got it and a follow-up question from brian could you elaborate a little bit on the base micro creature uh slash chassis uh i'm not sure i understand this question <laughs> Tom, can you help me understand? I'm, I'm not sure I understand it either. Uh, Brian, can you, <laughs> Brian, I'm going to, if, if uh, I can take you off of mute, if you want to ask the question directly or feel free to type in a follow-up question. Um, oh, yes. Uh, thank you, Tommy. Uh, uh, my question is, uh, uh, would you use E. coli uh, yeast or algae, uh, those micro creatures for your production? uh we don't we don't use it we don't necessarily have to use it uh but be, because we are not really doing uh synthetic biology over here but we do use sometimes use it to try to improve certain functionalities like flavors or some of the uh microstructure to stabilize the microstructure so that's that's why we are using it in in different ways but not really try to grow them Understood. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Thank you very much, Brian. Well, Jin Yu, what is what is uh, the rest of twenty two look twenty twenty two look like? What's a um, what's a successful twenty twenty two when we get to December? What what will you have like to uh, accomplish? Yeah, I think we are, the the goal for us this year is to bring up the volume to like around ten tons uh per production line and we are we are setting up several production line at this point so in the end in the end of this year we hope we can see some lights comes out and we are we so we can supply more of our partners and try to bring those fat in different uh, recipes and formulations and showcase it in different ways in region yeah that's that's what we i think will be a pretty good outcome for us in this year in the end of this year fantastic and finally, Jin Yu, I'd like to end on a question. Um, how can the audience listening both live now and those listening retroactively uh, tomorrow or a week from now, how can they get in touch with you and how can they help you? What are you looking for in terms of help? Yeah, uh, I mean, my e uh, we have our, our email over here, like in info at lipid.co and definitely feel free to reach out to, uh, to me person uh, directly in, in LinkedIn or, or through email too. And for us, we are trying to look for helps in uh, how do we bring these products into the market in different ways, like in also in different regions. Because one thing that we are actually already working with partners in in different several different countries, so we think it's a global thing that we can bring this new fat system in globally in even in this early stage. So that's why we are looking for help on the go to markets and also a, a bit on sales channels. And on the other hand, I think a lot of another part is that how do we improve our fat? It's we still need to make it better. So uh, that's the part we are actually also looking for different application studies. Like, for example, if you have some ideas that using this fat in different formulations or creating different end products. I think that's also another big thing that we are looking for help. Yeah. So basically on the, on the business part is how do we bring this into different, into the market by different ways. And the, the second one is like, how do we improve the products technically by doing a lot of application studies? Perfect. Well, thank you, Jin Yu, uh, for joining us today and congratulations on all the progress with Lipid. Um, I'd also like to thank the audience for your active participation. As a reminder, we host these agri-food conversations every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. Um, so if you wanna share this with a friend, we welcome you to do so. Um, new viewers can register uh, for, for agri-food conversations by going to agrifoodconversations.com and they can access all of the backlog uh, conversations we've had over the last few years. Um, and as a reminder, a replay will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours as well. So this concludes our April 
theme of food ingredients. Next month, we will be highlighting companies innovating in agroforestry. So again, please join us uh, if you're interested in that sector uh, for the month of May as we talk agroforestry. So thank you all again for your time, Jin Yu. Uh, thanks for joining us early in the morning, tai Taiwan time, and uh, hopefully we will talk soon. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Thank you Happy very much. Yeah. Have a okay. great